e-commerce is something which already has the best practices defined. In today's date, there is a new concept called as quick commerce and a lot of big players and merchants are trying to experiment with it. The idea is actually very, very simple. You have an app and you order items on it. The catch over here is that within just 30 minutes, the order is at your doorstep. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have used these kind of services and you find it pretty fascinating as well. So what goes behind the design of creating such a service? Let us try to explore it today. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Before we talk about more of this magic, I want to give you a quick overview about what have we already discussed. This is a part of the system design series and we have actually covered a lot of different topics. We have covered a lot of the basic fundamentals of system design, what is scaling and what all components did you have. We also learned how do you create all of these diagrams and connect components to each other. That is how you can create these diagrams in an interview or you can also try to create a rough draft whenever you are designing a bigger system. We also discussed how you can optimize your system. There are a lot of different techniques possible. And as you develop bigger and bigger designs, you want to know all of them. We have also discussed a lot of the common designs that you see in your day to day life. And I will be taking the help of some of these examples in this video and also in my future videos. So if all of this is very new to you, I would highly recommend you to stop the video right over here and start from the basics. If you have a little bit of idea, you are good to go and we can begin. So first of all, what is this 30 minute magic? If you are unaware about quick commerce apps, what usually happens is you are sitting in the comfort of your home. You have a certain app and there are a lot of items available on it. Usually it started with grocery items like produce and all those things. But now more and more items are getting added to the catalog day by day. Systems keep on expanding. So it is just like Amazon, but all of these items are in a limited quantity and the SKUs are also very limited. So you just browse your app and then you select, okay, I want all of this. The app magically locates your nearest warehouse and then a driver is assigned who gets the order for you from the warehouse and then at your doorstep. All of this is very magic. And how do you design such a system? So notice that we won't go into all the details like how is payment being processed? How are the delivery drivers assigned? Not all of that. I just want to talk about what are the essential components that you would want when you're designing such a system. You cannot just say that, yes, I will have an app and everything will happen in it. Or you cannot say that, okay, I will host something on my server and then user can connect on it. What kind of a design should you come up with? And that is where you need to be clear about all of the requirements that you have. Because based upon your requirements, you can then decouple your system and then start to design for a bigger architecture. You know that you are going to have some functional requirements and some non-functional requirements. So for example, first of all is availability connection. You need to be able to connect to a distribution warehouse that is within one hour because that is the time that these apps usually have. Next, all of your ordering system must be consistent. That means you need to have a database with asset properties. And you should be able to handle a large volume of data. Generally, you can expect that in an entire day, all throughout your locations, you are expecting 1 million orders per day. So this is the scale that you're expecting. That is how you want to decide, okay, I will have such and such data centers and I will have my data centers in multiple regions. And with all of this, you will definitely want more speed for your system. And since you are targeting quick commerce, you need to make sure that, okay, your SKUs can be very less, but your quantity should be well managed. You should be able to deliver the items. The USP over here is not that you have every variety of item. For example, Amazon, there are so many items, so many sellers, and your item can be shipped from anywhere. Over here, your item needs to come from a distribution center that is located within one hour of your current location. So this is how you want to manage your inventory. And that is the type of products that you should be targeting. Talking about products, you should be aware about some of the common terms that we will be using throughout our design. So for example, first of all, you have inventory. 
Inventory simply means the count of an individual item that is available at your data center. So what is an item? For example, a bag of Cheetos. So this is an item and inventory is that, okay, I have 1000 packet of Cheetos. This is how you're managing your inventory. And these two terms are often confused and used interchangeably. The next thing is a distribution center. Distribution centers are different from warehouses. That is because you're not stocking up at a place. A certain distribution center is only responsible for serving the areas within its range. You will not be responsible to ship to every location. And this is very different from an e-commerce application. The last part is order. An order is nothing but a collection of all of the inventory that is ordered by the user. So you can have five bags of Cheetos, you can have two packs of butter, you can have one gallon of milk. So all of these will make up an order. Now you know all of the basic components. You will have a customer who is using your app. They are going to place an order and it is your job that you will connect to some of the other distribution center. A driver will be assigned and then you are going to deliver the order. But how does the system look like? Where do you start the call? What are some of the microservices that you will be designing? So the first step is that as soon as you open your app, what should happen? It should try to determine, okay, where in the world you are situated and what distribution centers are around you. That tells you that we are first going to start with a nearby service. The nearby service is responsible to fetch you the list of top distribution centers that are nearest to you. So over here, you are going to give your latitude and longitude as the input parameters. It will tell you that, okay, I am at this particular location and let us say you have configured, okay, look up in a five kilometer radius. So that is where you are supplying, okay, look in this range. Now what will happen? You will manage a database that is storing the location of each of your distribution center. So you are storing the latitude and longitude, the address, the capacity and the region. So you see, you have every information and this DC, it can determine whether it has to serve this user or not. So what you can do is in your nearby service, you can try to fetch some of the top five distribution centers. And we will get in a moment why we are going for top five. Why not the closest one? Even before that, when you're calculating a distance, this is where you can distinguish between a rough design and a better design. Because try to think, if you are at a certain location and you're looking up in a five kilometer radius, if your distribution center is right beside you, but there is a river between it, then it may feel that, okay, the distribution center is just one kilometer away, but the actual distance traveled by the road could be very much large. So in a better design, what you can do is instead of just finding out the Euclidean distance, you can try to find out the actual path from a map API. And that is what will make a better design. Up till now, what we have done is we created a nearby service. We are giving it some input coordinates. We calculate the distance. And then we return a list of all of the distribution centers. I know that, okay, these distribution centers are possible. What next? Now you have to determine, are all the items even available or not? And that is why we took a list of distribution centers rather than just one. So what is going to happen is I am now going to design an availability service. This service is responsible to determine, hey, are the items available or not at a particular distribution center? In a distribution center, you can maintain two kinds of tables, items and their inventory. So every item will have its description and what is it? This is used to identify it. And what is the inventory? What is the quantity? How many are already reserved? And what's available? That is why choosing a database with asset properties is very, very essential. Let us say you have 10 quantity of any item available. It should not be possible that one user is able to order eight of these items and the other user is able to order seven of these items just because they were available. This is giving you a faulty experience, right? So if you have atomic operations, then this is not possible and you will always have consistency. To give you a recap, what did we do? 
we had a list of all of the distribution centers. You determine that, okay, these are items available at all of these distribution centers and this works for me. You can then return this inventory and this availability service is going to determine, okay, this distribution center can fulfill my order. What happens next now? You might have already guessed it. You now have your order service and this service is actually responsible for fulfilling your order and making all of your database updates. You have your customer who has placed the order. You have determined that, okay, this distribution center can fulfill it. So the next step is actually making all of these operations. You want to make these transactions. So you have your orders table, you have your order items table and you have your inventory. So you actually make all of these transaction updates and send a notification to the distribution center that yes, this order needs to be fulfilled and this confirmation is sent back. So now the user knows that, okay, my order has been accepted. So what just happened? You created an order, you determined this can be fulfilled you actually made those updates in your database and you sent a confirmation. If you now want to tie up everything together, how does that look like? First of all, you have your client application. This could be a mobile app. It could be a web app. This is where the user actually logs in and starts to make a purchase. They start to add all of the items that they need. The next part is your API gateway. And in one of our previous video, we have discussed this in very much detail. This is where your actual gatekeeping stuff happens. You determine if this user valid or not. You have all of your rate limiting over here. You have your load balancers over here and you also keep out all of the security threats. This API gateway now connects to all of your microservices. The first part is the location service. You need to determine, okay, what all distribution centers are near me. As soon as you determine that, okay, these are the closest distribution centers. Now you want to determine, are my items even available or not? You do a join query and then you can determine, okay, these are the items available. As soon as you confirm this, it is now time that you actually create your order. When you create this order, this is where you actually make the lock on your database and you are going to perform a transaction. You have different tables for items, orders, inventory, and order items. And notice that all of these distribution centers can maintain their own databases. That is how you can scale your system. And each of these distribution centers can have their own database with asset properties. So that is how you can always stay consistent. So finally, your order is completed. A notification is sent to the distribution center. And now an actual human being will pick up your order and then go to deliver it. That is an entirely different design and it is beyond the scope of this video. You may say that, okay, this is a very simple design, but what separates a good design from a great design? Notice how we are managing a single database like Postgres for a distribution center. You may say that, okay, this is not fault tolerant. What if it fails? I do not have a replica, but you are targeting a quick commerce website, correct? So sometimes you want to leverage consistency rather than fault tolerance. If my database fails, then it is fine that one of the distribution centers may not process orders for certain time. Because if you are managing duplicate databases, then it is a possibility that one of the database is reporting that 10 items are available, whereas the other may report only eight are available. That is because of a synchronization issue and you are making a quick commerce website you want to be very quick in these decisions. So it is better to not fulfill an order rather than having a bad customer experience. And that is why I always say, there is never a best design or a correct design. It all depends upon your customer and the service provider. What do they want? What does your interviewer want? Does he want a system which is very much fault tolerant or does he want a very fast system? And you need to make all of these improvements as and when required. Sometimes it may be fine that yes, we will lose a customer, but I want my system to be accurate. And at other times, it may be okay to have a faulty order once every while. It just depends upon your system and the customer service that you're providing. 
Also, there can be improvements at every stage. Think about it. Whenever you are opening up your app, you are trying to determine that, okay, these are the distribution centers near me. What if you could cache this? What if you can cache your location? What if you can cache the distribution centers? All of this can speed up things, correct? So whenever you get these kind of questions, just keep on brainstorming with your interviewer. That is going to keep giving you hints and that is how you can keep on improving your design. That is very, very essential. So while going throughout the video, what thoughts did you have? Where can you improve the design? What other components can you add? And what problems did you face? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.